Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve word search lead code number 79. So we're given an M by N grid of characters called board and another string called word. And we need to return true if word exists in the grid. So the word can be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent cells or adjacent cells are either horizontally or vertically neighboring. And the same letter cell may not be used more than once. So if our word was this very silly word of A, B, C, C, E, D, well, we could find the A here, then B, C, C, E, D. We do find that word, and so we'd return true. And again, remember, you can't reuse letters, so you can't do like A, B, C, and then use like C again, or go here, and then get like a third C by going back up. We have to go through this whole grid and search it like that. Okay, second example here. Now we're looking for the word S, E, E. So that's an actual word of C. So we go through the grid here, and we see, oh, that's an S. So that's partially right, but we don't find an E here. So that kind of discontinues. We go over here, we find an S. Okay, we find an E up here, but then we don't see another E, so that doesn't continue. But if we go down here, we can see E, then another E, and so that would actually return true because we found the word. And a final example here of false, there's no orange path here because it doesn't exist. Okay, so suppose we are given this grid here and we are looking for the word SF, and we actually can find that it's gonna be right there. So basically you would scan the grid and these are just defined by position. So this is basically zero, zero. So that's row zero, column zero. This is row zero, column one, two, and three. I'm just gonna mark it zero, one, two down here. So we're clearly looking for an S here. And so we can actually have like an index here saying we're currently looking for this first character. So we'd scan the grid and clearly we don't find it here. We don't find it here. We don't find it until we get over here. Okay, so we found an S, that's great. We found the character associated with our index here. And so this is good. Now, can we find the next letter we're looking for, aka at the next index, so we'd be looking for an F, can we find that anything adjacent? Well, if we go over here, we do not find it, so that would say, nope, that doesn't work. Over here, nope, that doesn't work either, but over here, we get an F, and so we found the character we're looking for. We would then see if we can find this. Well, that's the end of our index here, and so that actually means we're kind of at the end of our word here, and so that means we found the word, and so we'd want to return true, saying that basically we tried our backtrack function over here and it actually did find a success and so we'd overall we'd want to return true there okay so let's do this again but now let's actually change up the word here and say we are looking for sfs and we're not going to be able to find that here we'd have to kind of jump through this c which we can't do so again we'd kind of search the grid here it doesn't work doesn't work doesn't work doesn't work we find an s okay let's actually see if we can find the next index and so we can we go over here and we find that now we would try to look for an s anywhere that's connected to this f here and we cannot find that okay that's not going to find anything because because that hits a C, doesn't work. This is a B, doesn't work. This is a D, doesn't work. And this is an S, except, well, that's already been used. And so we should actually mark that we've already been there. And so before we actually do this, what we're gonna do instead here is that when we call it over here and we see a success, we see that this was an S, which is what we are looking for here. We're actually going to mark that this is, we're just gonna mark it with a hashtag, just a special character that we're choosing that says we've already been using this in the path. So that way, when you move over the index and we're looking for the next letter here, great, we found an F. Let's see if we can find an S. Oh, well, actually, let's try and find an S here, but nope, that is a hashtag that's not now an S. And so this F would have a failure path on all of its directions here. And so this would actually result in a failure path as well. And you'd basically go through the entire grid here. This S here, we find an S, but we don't find an F. That doesn't work. So these are all failure paths here. If we scan through the entire grid and every everything returns false, then you'd want to return false overall. Okay, so we'll get M is equal to the length of the board. That's the number of rows it has. And N is equal to the length of the board at zero. That's saying that it has this many columns. And we'll also get W is equal to the length of the word. So that's saying if you get to this index, basically, that's that first out of bounds index. And so that would be you found the whole word if you get there. We're going to have this backtrack function and it needs to take a position. This is just going to be a two times tuple ij so it's just a position on the grid and it's also going to take an index which is the part of the word we're currently looking at so that's basically the i that we were using in the picture but i can't use i because we're going to end up using i and j below okay so we'll write this code in a moment here for now i'm just going to say pass because we need to do this for 
each position in the grid, we need to try it. So we'll do for i in the range of m, and then for j in the range of n. So that's all possible valid ij's over the board. It iterates it like this. And we want to know, do we have a solution at ij? Well, if we have a backtrack, we need to give backtrack our position, which is ij. So if we have backtrack on ij, and we need the index, and we first want to look for the first letter, and so we'd want to have the starting index of zero, saying we're starting at the first letter. If that is true, well, this is going to return a Boolean saying we found the path. And so we can return true because we just need one path here to the word and we found it. So we can. If we do this for every single position and we never find a solution, well, that means we can just return false. Okay, so to write this backtrack function here, we first just unpack the position. So we'll get i and j is equal to the position. And now firstly, a big base case here, if the index is equal to w, if we've gotten to the end of the word, well, then we found the word, and so we can effectively return true. Now another base case here, if our index is not at the end here, we are currently looking for a letter. If the board at i, j, if that's not equal to the word at the index, so so if the character we're on is not currently the character we're looking for, well, then that's immediately returned false. That path doesn't work. Okay, if we've gotten down to here, then the character was the one that we were looking for. We're happy with what board at ij is. So as we visualized, we need to set board at i at j equal to some special character, which I'm making a hashtag saying we've been here before. This is currently in our path. We found that this character works. We are going to use it as part of the path. Don't use it again. However, before we do that, we're actually going to need to get a temporary variable for it. We'll call it char is equal to board at ij. Why do we need that? Well, if we found that this path actually doesn't work, well, then we would need to set board at ij back to be the char or back to be the character it was previously so that that character could be used in a different path. Okay, now we need to do our basically DFS part of this. So what we'll do is for i offset and j offset in the list of basically directions. So we could go right, so we do 0, 1. This would be keep the row the same, move up the column by 1. So that's 0, 1, that's right. We could do 1, 0. This one is going to be down. We could move left, and so that is keeping the row the same, and then 1 to the left here. And then there is up, which is moving up the row, so negative 1, and then keeping the column the same. So we have right, down, left, and up. So for i offset and j offset in that list of stuff, well, if we're currently at i, j, well, then our row and our column, so our new position here, is going to be, well, r is going to be i plus i offset, and c, or our column, is going to be j plus the j offset. So this is just one position to the side here. So if we're here and we're right, we'll be over here. If we're here and we're down, we go here, left here, up here. Now we could could definitely be in any of these positions where if we're in the corner and we move up that means our row was negative one we don't want that if we move to the right over here that would be our column is n so that's not going to work that's out of bounds we could go down out of it and so that means our row is equal to m and if we go left well that means our column is negative one so basically we have these conditions here I'm just gonna copy and paste it here because it's easier to say all at once. If the row is at least zero and it's less than M and the column is at least zero and it's less than N. So this checks if R and C is actually some valid position in the grid, there's nothing wrong with it. Well then if we have backtrack on R and C, so on that new position with the index plus one, because now we're looking for the next character, if we have a path going forward, well then our current path is correct and so we would just return true. If we try all of this stuff here and we didn't find a path, well, then we would be over here because none of those returned true. None of these returned true. And so we eventually get out of this loop. If that is the case, we did not find a valid path. So we need to do two things. We need to mark that the board at ij is now equal to whatever it was before. So we are resetting that path. We are undoing what we did. And now it is fresh. The board is fresh and we can just return false because we didn't find a path anywhere and so we are also an incorrect path. Now if we run this code we actually see that it looks like it's going to work and if you submit it here there's actually a very small error. It's very very silly and I do need to explain why it comes up here. So the reason we're returning false is because well we try backtrack on the only position which is 0 0 and of course with our starting index of 0 we get ij is 0 0. If index is equal to w, no it's not, our index is 0 
zero and w is one. So we're not returning true yet. If it's different, return false. No, this is gonna go fine. It is actually what we're looking for. And so we mark it as a hashtag. And then what we do here is we loop through all of the different directions. And if any of them are valid positions and they find a path, then we can return true here. But to actually hit our base case of the index matching the length, there needs to be another valid position to go to. This would just need to go to anywhere else to say that the index was then W, but none of these pass, okay? For all of these next positions here, none of them actually go through because there are no valid positions. So we're actually going to deal with this in just a very special case here. If M is equal to one and N is equal to one. So if we have specifically one row and specifically one column, then we just wanna return that the board at zero, zero, the only valid position, if that's equal to the word. So if this matches, then it's gonna return true. If we have like the board is A, but we're looking for B, then that would return false. Okay, so that's just an outside of the function base case here. If you submit that, that's going to get that final case there. Now the time complexity of this is really slow. It's slow, but it is optimal. So there's really no better you can do here. Think about it. We have to go through every single position in the grid. So of course that's at least an O of M times N. So M times N is the number of cells. So we have to visit every cell, but we're not just visiting them once or twice. We could visit them for every single cell because you could basically find most of the word and then you would give up and go all the way back. And then somewhere else you could find almost all of the word and then you could go all the way back. And so basically for each of the M times N positions, you could see the whole grid. And so that's gonna be M times N times M times N. What is that? Well, that's just M squared times N squared. And so you could really write this as M times N all squared like that, okay? Now in practice, it won't be quite this bad, but that's what you should come up with for an interview. And the space complexity of this, this is a little bit easier here. The depth of the recursive call stack is only the length of the word, because if you ever get basically to the end of the word and it's wrong, well, then you would backtrack. And if you get to the word and it's right, well, then it's right. And so you would never do the search again. So this is just gonna be big O of, uh, we'll call it L. So L is the length of the word here. The call stack is not gonna go further than the length of the word. Okay, drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.